If there's one thing about the DJ industry, it's that it is always evolving. And right now, there is a big change happening in the industry. So what is it? Well, quite simply, road cases are out and the modern DJ console is in. Hey, it's Justin Kanoya, DJ, business coach, and idea sharer. We are at the cusp of another major change in the DJ industry. The DJ setup you have for an afternoon pool party in someone's backyard should not be the same setup you have for a wedding reception in the ballroom of a five-star hotel. And this is a sentiment that is beginning to be shared by DJs all over. Here's what Rick Webb had to say when I asked him about it. We're, we're gonna have a big shift. I'm a big believer. A lot of people have said it where we're gonna have a big shift in a few years here where like you're gonna have these really, really, really cheap DJs that are really cheap and then you're gonna have this big polars. There's not gonna be many in the middle anymore. And to be up in that class of the DJs, it's going, you're gonna have to have furniture. The presentation, people are coming to be, with social media and everything, people have come to see like your presentation and how you look, the part, and DJ furniture is here. So whether it's been a Denon controller, a CDJ setup, or a turntable setup, I've pretty much been all about the table and road case setup since 2015. And frankly, it's starting to feel a little stale. It's feeling dated. But for the longest time, it didn't bother me. It just seemed like the right setup. Even when I would see images of Jason Janai set up with his amazing DJ console video booths, I would think, you know, that's just what makes sense for a luxury running. But only for that instance. And even when Joe Bunn first launched Bun Gear and the Command Center, it still just felt like a luxury item that wasn't necessary for most DJ gigs. I didn't even think it was necessary for most weddings, but that's all different now. And naturally, Joe would agree. So I agree with you, man, 100%. I think that the furniture is gonna become the industry standard. I'm building the Bun Gear Command Center now for two years and sold 300 in the worst time to be a DJ in the history of the world, quite frankly. And that just shows you like how important it is to, to people now, you know, that they realize that they are the center of attention. They are going to be up in front of this crowd. And by becoming the norm, it means you'll see more and more DJs using these. And setups from Bun Gear, Toadmatic, and Max Booth will continue to show up on Instagram feeds. It's clear to me that this is the future of the DJ set. I think it is going to become the norm. It is going to become so almost an eyesore or so offensive to be setting up a road case on a six foot or even worse an eight foot table yeah. that people are just gonna be embarrassed to do it. Yeah. Now that might sound a bit harsh, but I'll be honest with you. I'm starting to feel that embarrassment with my own non-DJ console setup. But how did we even get here? When did tables and road cases become an embarrassment? Why are facades not as desired as they once were? I didn't ever implement a facade, I don't think, because number one, you and I aren't exactly uh, super tall. So number one, I felt like it was like my head. They were always too tall. The one that I did buy was custom made and I made the guy specifically cut it down to under the level of the deck. So yeah, it was like, it, it was all the things. I wanted people to see that I was actually playing. I wanted it to look better, to hide the wires, hide the cables, and that was it. Really. I think like anything, we evolve. And evolving means changing. Think about speakers transitioning from big stacks or boxes on a stand to sleek and thin, even going from black to white. The same thing happened with photo booths. In fact, the design of Danny Max's photo booths were the catalyst to what we know as the Max DJ booth. So I have been building photo booths a really long time. And a lot of my customers who are also DJs and also on photo booths were like, I really want a better option for my DJ booth. I want something that looks like yours, the way it assembles. And after a lot of people asking me to do it, I decided, all right, let me try to develop this. So I reached out to a, a number of DJs and they helped out. They gave me some suggestions and that's kind of how the product was built. I've always felt that a DJ setup is designed around these three requirements. Quick setup and strike, as few pieces as possible, and obnoxiously perfect cable management. With DJ consoles, those three ideas are at the forefront. For instance, the Toad booth. 
on wheels, literally rolls into place and plugs into power. And you just add a couple speakers and you're ready to go. A quick setup, just one piece and not a cable in sight. And it's one of the reasons that Toad Booth creator DJ Toad built his first booth. The whole idea is I wanted something that I could keep all my gear in, wheel it into a venue, plug in and play. Something more mobile. And I had the idea too that I wanted a video screen on it and do all the, the company things. I wanted to expand on that. Cable management is top of mind in the command center with the center stand holding a full 19 inch rack to equip just about anything a DJ would need in a separate rack. I think people really love the rack. You know, you're not gonna flood it with a bunch of stuff, but you can put a couple of mics in it, power conditioner, get Ben Stowe over at NLFX to make a little hookup panel. And I think that's the most unique part of ours that, that the other ones don't have. And Danny also takes pride in his product for being a quick setup. So you can leave all your equipment permanently mounted in there. You don't have to take it out. You don't have to transport it separately in a row case. And it's just really the portability factor. But then it just looks really cool. I love the fact that we integrate the Apolabs coin lights. So it glows, it dances to the music. It's just a darn good looking booth. Toad looks at his booth as more utilitarian, or as he describes it, a job box. My idea is I need a good, strong box loaded with gear, more akin to a plumber than an artist, but you wheel your box in, you plug it in play, and wheel, you wheel it out. One final thing that is important to address is costs. DJ consoles are a much more pricier alternative to a road case and a table. And pricing for booths like this are gonna start at $2,500 and climb from there. Alternatively, a road case is usually no more than $250, and a lifetime table at Costco is gonna cost less than $100. But improving your setup and performance will always come at a cost. Yeah. You know, even with my own guys, they can't all afford a Bun Gear Command Center, even at my cost, it's expensive. Yeah. So I've told them, I'm like, dude, put something in front of that table. I don't care if it's a facade, you're, you're, you know, we go in these exclusive high-end venues, or if, even if it's a barn wedding, I don't care. Like, yeah. I want you to look better because as soon as you crack that mic and start talking, all eyes are gonna be on yeah. you. Buy something. Buy a, a pedestal style, buy a rolling console, but do something because a cupcake table, you know, it's, it's over. And I couldn't agree more. I think I know what I need to do. So I guess stay tuned for a future DJ console unboxing video on this channel. Which one should I choose? And what do you think about all of this? Are you ready to move on to a setup like this? Or are you content with your road case? Let's start the debate in the comments. And do me a favor, help me promote this video by hitting that like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this. Thank you for watching. I'm DJ Justin Kamaya, and I'll see you next time online.